Hey everybody, welcome to my latest video. In this we're going to be focusing on sketching nature. So I was actually on my way to a cafe to sketch an urban scene and I went through High Park and just this pond and the day made me want to sit down and uh, practice sketching nature. So I'm starting with a thumbnail study. I've got three different um, boxes with the same scene and I want to test some different watercolor techniques. So I'm throwing a few examples by uh, Daniel Pito Campos. He's a watercolor artist and I stumbled upon his course on uh, Domestica. I've been taking it. It's on specifically landscape uh, watercolor techniques and I've really been enjoying it. It's a bit of a departure from my um, urban sketching using pen mostly. Uh, to document urban scenes, and it's all about watercolor and nature. And so I wanted to use that to uh, inform these studies that I'm doing before the main, the main sketches that I do. Uh, and it's really about understanding how to work with the medium of watercolor. And so he's very heavy-handed with his pigments and uses a lot of water and dark, rich pigment. And I just found it really exciting, and so I'm trying to work through in my own way some of the lessons I got from this course. And so it's about different levels of saturation of water. So in that upper left, I think I had the least amount of water on the page, and then that right, I sprayed it a lot, so there was a lot of water, and then so the bottom left was a bit of a mix. I think I wanted to have a wet page, but then put really a lot of pigment on my brush uh, to make the marks. So I found it exciting. I'm still sort of getting very muddy um, results, but that's where I wanted to start. And then you'll see the that full spread at the beginning. And that's the sketch that I ultimately end up doing after these little thumbnail sketches. And so I was happiest with the the sketch to the bottom left here. There was a lot of uh, saturation and the way that the pigment was moving around with the wet page, I really liked. And I'm trying to add some flicks and some scratches uh, with the other end of the brush. And now I'm going to the main sketch of the day. I tried to have a spread of three separate sketches all on one big spread. And so I'm starting with that same scene uh, with the log in the pond. I've got it up for reference so you can kind of follow along what I'm working through. I am still starting with, uh, again, the pencil and uh, pen and ink to outline things as a basis for, for the watercolor painting. I actually, I was just on vacation and spent a lot of time on Georgian Bay and I did exclusively watercoloring, so I'm going to be putting up uh, some videos soon, but I sort of just left the pen away, it barely did anything with pencil and was just watercoloring and it was quite a bit different. I wasn't working in a sketchbook, I was working on uh, Arches watercolor paper and so I was really just watercoloring for a bit. Um, not something I ever expected to be doing, but I've been enjoying it and I want to take this, these experiments in looser style to my urban sketching. So that was the base um, line work for that this initial sketch. And I'm just wetting the page. I use that spray bottle you saw me spritz and then I have a wet wide brush that I just sort of even the, the wetness out on the paper. So I'm starting with the the brownie layers, just mixing up a, a lightish brown you know, to then build up. And I've turned my paper um, vertically so that I can draw straighter lines uh, up and down. I find I'm better able to keep a straight line working up and down versus horizontally side to side. So I have a, a wet page and I'm applying, trying to apply a strong amount of pigment and then go in with a drier brush 
with even more pigment right at the shoreline to get some of the uh, the nice blending effects when you have a white pa a wet page rather uh, with a lot of pigment and similarly trying that above the waterline uh, working in with a, a very deep green. And I'm trying to work carefully around the, the light uh, logs. I'm trying to keep them as white as possible to, to then work through later. You'll see I, I got a tube of gouache to try out um, instead of using an ink pen uh, with white to try to use gouache, uh, which I'm not very familiar with. And I sort of had mixed results. You'll see that later in the video. Uh, and here I sort of break. I'm working with a very dark color right away. And that's in part because of what I'd seen in the course and the very pigment heavy um, painting style of uh, Daniel Pito Campos. And so I try to sort of introduce a gradient. You can see I'm using a different shade of green and sort of letting it wash out with the with the wet page. And I do enjoy how this turned out. I think I would just want to add more white space in the future so that it's not just the texture of the paint smishing together, but also you get some really nice highlights. I do like how the top of this turned out. It was a very wet amount of pigment sliding around and some drips came. I would have liked that it was less uniform, um, but overall I, I learned some things. And so moving on to the next sketch in the spread, there was a log sort of right across from me in the pond that I wanted to try to capture and not sketch the entire scene, just really focus on the, the log and then experiment how, with how I might capture the foliage behind. But this is a blend kind of of the uh, Daniel style. Like I still like having really measured and careful lines and then trying to apply watercolor over that almost in contrast um, and let the watercolor do what watercolor does and that's something that I'm still discovering and I think I'm going to be discovering for a long time there's just so many different ways it can react on the page and I think being less precise with everything and trying to really get the textures out of what watercolor can be is exciting to me and that's what I want to develop is just having these unexpected artifacts from when you're painting. And I'm not saying I get there. I think it's just a, a path that I've uncovered that I'm really excited about starting down. And so I do build up the log, I'm adding a light wash uh, at the start, and then slowly building in the shadows. But I'm very much painting in the lines here. I'm not very loose and free, and there's nothing really exciting that comes from <laughs> painting in this way. I think I might try to use a different brush and maybe get some texture out of the brush um, doing this. And I jump a little around a little bit here. I sort of I'm waiting for the the log that I just did in the middle of the page to dry so that I can add washes over top. And I sketching there's a little log that had two ducks on it, so that's what I'm sketching now, just a little vignette. I was really enjoying sitting by this pond. And just observing the ducks and hearing the sounds of the bugs and birds in the trees. There is even a duck walking towards me. Uh, I think probably because he was expecting food, but I tried to very quickly sketch him. Turns out into a 
kind of a fat duck. My wife wasn't very impressed with this duck, but I kind of like him. <laughs> and so I added a decent amount of water there. It's hard to sort of tell, but it's a wet page and I wanted to really just push some pigment in and let the water do the mixing and then add I like adding once you have a base wash and it's still wet sort of dotting in pieces of really pigment heavy with a drier brush um, and liking how that works it's not always controlled uh, but I I like how it can change a painting and it's important that the brush be a different um, moisture level than the page so if the page is really wet I try to have a really really dry brush I find that has the best best results you can see that the pigment is kind of bleeding outside of the the duck's body Anyway, I had fun with this duck. And now it allowed the page to dry, and I'm going in just with a, a darker shade of brown to try to give some volume to that, that log. And there you see I wanted some more moisture on the page so I gave it a quick spray and then I have a relatively dry brush with a deep amount of pigment and I'm poking that in to the wet page to give the the deeper shadow but then allow it to sort of disperse um, based on the, the moisture of the page so that it's not such a hard line and it's less um, predictable. And while that dries, I like to paint in the two little ducks on the, the log in the pond. And while that dries, I decide to break out the gouache, start mixing it in. I've never worked with gouache before, so this is the first time. Uh, and I want it for the highlights, but I also want it to almost give a base coat to the logs to then paint on top of everything. 
and I do mix in light, um, a light beige with it, so it's not uh, a pure white going on. And I didn't love it. I mean, I was cutting it with water, so it wasn't 100% uh, opaque. But neither are the, the paint pens. So I end up having uh, to go over and over to try to get it to, to be opaque. I think the lesson is it's really best to try to block out and save the white of the paper for the highlights. And so here now is the full spread. I added uh, some experimental foliage behind the log in the center, different levels of wetness on the paper and different techniques of applying it. So I learned a few things. I do like mixing in red with green. I like the um, mixing in the contrasting colors. So thank you so much for tuning in uh, to this nature portion of my painting and sketching journey.